Chicago Blackhawks, the National Hockey League champions for the first time since joining the league 41 years ago, meet the Toronto Maple Leafs in a semi-final series. The Hawks are overwhelming favorites with a strong offense, led by Bobby Hull, who has just completed a 52-goal season, and Stan Mikita, the first player ever to win three major individual awards in one year. The Leafs, backed by the spectacular goaltending of Terry Sawchuk, a 37-year-old scarred veteran of 17 seasons, start to win games on Chicago ice, something they failed to do all year. Toronto, a team that suffered a 10-game losing streak during the regular season, are home to playoff perfection by coach Punch Imlach and King Clancy. The Hawks win two games in the series, but the Leafs' solid defensive play, relentless forechecking, and superb goaltending form a combination Chicago can't master. Toronto wins a berth in the finals, eliminating Chicago four games to two. Montreal's rookie goalie, Rogassien Vachon, the kid nobody had ever heard of two months earlier, responds to the pressure as Sawchuk did against Chicago. Old-timers can't remember the last time a youngster has come from the lowest rung in the minor leagues to star in hockey's biggest show. While the Rangers make it close, the Canadians win four straight games. They'll face the Leafs in the best of seven finals. Montreal. No stranger to Stanley Cup fever. Lord Stanley donated the cup that bears his name in 1893, and a team from Montreal was the first to win the trophy. The Canadians have captured the cup a record 14 times. Another cup victory, coupled with the fantastic success of Expo 67, would give Montrealers everything they hoped for during Canada's centennial year. This is Danny Gallivan at the Montreal Forum for the first game of the finals. The Montreal Canadiens are well rested after their four game sweep over New York, but the Leafs are weary, having eliminated Chicago only two days earlier. This series shapes up as a goaltending duel, Vashon versus Sachuk. And of course, it's always a coaching battle when Toe Blake meets up with Punch Imlet. Referee Bill Friday drops the puck and the Stanley Cup 1967 finals are underway. Montreal in their red home uniforms, Toronto in white. Right from the opening whistle, the Canadians show the kind of skating ability that has long been a trademark of Blake's teams. Jean Beliveau leads a three-man rush, feeds a pass to Joe Tremblay, but Sawchuk makes the save. The Leafs take a penalty, and the Montreal power play puts added pressure on Sawchuk. There's Dick Duff with his shot right off. Watch now for the most sensational save in the hockey game. Tim Horton circles at center, breaks right through the Montreal defense, and appears to have Vashon beat. It's Beliveau again with Cornwallier and Duff. Cornwallier, the power play specialist, scored 10 power play goals against the Leafs during the regular season. Watch him circle in front of Sawchuk to pick up his 11, and the Canadians lead 1-0. Oh, the the Leafs come right back. Jim Pappen chases a loose puck in the corner. It's out to Larry Hillman, and the game is tied at 1-1. Goal comes only 15 seconds after the goal by Cornwallier. Henri Richard scores his first of the game, and now we're into the second period. Rousseau's shot is blocked. Richard goes after the rebound, but he's tied up by Marcel Pronovo. Hey, 
Leo Oshfor, number 25, with Bob Bond, the only Leaf player back. Oshfor gets his own rebound, but the puck bounces away. Cornwallier gets another power play goal, his 12th. And then Beliveau connects on a perfect pass from Gilles Tremblay. And it's 4-1, to one, Montreal. Now the Leafs have the man advantage. And number 18, Jim Pappen, scores his fourth playoff goal after a fine return pass from Horton. But the Leafs are tiring, and they trail by two goals in the third period. Claude Provo, number 14, displaying some of his patented penalty killing. But the big gun in the third period is number 16, Henri Richard, who winds up the scoring with two more goals, his second and third of the hockey game. It marks the first time that Henri Richard has scored three goals in the playoff game. However, he's not the only Richard to do so. Brother Rocket accomplished the feat seven times. With Montreal leading 5-2, to two, Terry Sawchuk is replaced by Johnny Bauer, who gives up the sixth and final Montreal goal. The Canadians, solid favorites before the finals got underway, have now gone 15 games without a loss. Before the final series, Punch Imlach referred to young Vashon as a junior B goaltender. However, before the second game, Imlach said, I'm giving Vashon a promotion. He is now a junior A. The Toronto goalie is Johnny Bauer. And Bauer, who didn't see much action in the semifinals, is brilliant. The 42-year-old hockey marvel stops rush after rush with some very fine saves early in the game. In all eight playoff games to date played by the Toronto Maple Leafs, the team scoring the first goal has gone on to win. In this contest, the Leafs strike first with Bob Pulford setting up Pete Stankowski. Bauer's artistry baffles Montreal. Rarely does a man over 40 possess reflexes like Bauer, a man Imlac calls the most remarkable athlete in the world. In this game, the four Maple Leaf defensemen give him all the protection that the goalie can ask for. Hillman, Pronovo, Horton, and Stanley keep the Canadians off stride, and the Leaf forwards are quick to come back and help out. Ron Ellis, a solid two-way player, attacks for Toronto as the period ends. Come on, Frank, dig, 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 dig. Come on, dig. In the second period, Frank Mahovlich brings the puck into Montreal territory. They hold it in. And finally, Mike Walton is left uncovered. Walton's hard shot finds the corner of the net, and the Leafs lead 2 to nothing. Beliveau, Ferguson, and Russo lead a Montreal rush. A penalty to the Leafs gives the Canadians a man advantage, and they storm in on Bauer. Horton and Stanley have trouble clearing the puck. Armstrong and Keon lend a hand, but the Leafs still can't relieve the pressure. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Johnny. Come on. Do it again. Come on. Then, to add to their problems, Conniger is penalized for charging. Now the Canadians enjoy a two-man advantage, but they still can't get that puck past Bauer. Horton later adds to the Leafs total, and the second period ends with Toronto leading 3 to nothing. Bauer's most hectic moments are yet to come. In the third period, John Ferguson's stick catches Bauer in the face. The injury to the durable Bauer doesn't keep him from finishing the game. He stops a final Montreal surge by LaRose and Ferguson to record the only shutout of the playoff. Toronto wins 3-0 to, to tie up the series. The playoffs move to the city of Toronto, home of the Maple Leafs.
the Maple Leaf Gardens for the third game of the series. They are about to witness the second longest playoff game in Gardens history, a game that won't be over until close to midnight. The evergreen Johnny Bauer will kick aside 60 shots before this game is decided. Bashan will turn back 51. Happens, Tomkowski and Pulford start the game for the Leafs. 88 minutes and 26 seconds later, they'll finish it. Montreal strikes early in the game. Delaval with 399 regular season goals to his credit, opens a scoring at 227, deflecting Bobby Russo's pass into the open net. Montreal keeps the pressure on, and Bauer has to be quick to stop Yvonne Cornoye and Dave Ballone. At 8.39 of the first period, the Leafs get a break. Larry Hillman slaps a rolling puck, and Stamkowski tips it in. It's a 1-1 tie. No further scoring in the period. Now in the second period, Armstrong and Keon move in with Mahavlich trailing. Mahavlich fights for the loose puck. His deflected shot is off the goalpost, but it stays out. Number 19, Terry Harper, covers up. On the faceoff, Stamkowski back to Hillman. Over to Pappen. Pappen's return pass is intercepted by Provo. A race down the ice, but Hillman gets back fast and knocks Provo off stride. Turn rush and his bouncing shot gives Vashon a lot of trouble. Demchowski tries to center the puck, but Provo is there to clear it down the ice. Bowery stops the drive, and now a battle breaks out in the corner with Todd LaRose and Brian Conacher trading punches. Conacher's overhand right connects, and LaRose is cut for seven stitches. Come on, come on, come on, in it! The Leafs play their best hockey in the second period, and their strong forechecking keeps the puck in the Montreal zone. Jim Pappen grabs a loose puck and his backhand shot dribbles through Vashon's leg. The Leafs take the lead, two to one. Late in the period, a face-off deep in Toronto territory. Ferguson ties it up and the team's moving to the third period with two goals each. Take over. Come on, come on. Delavo facing off with Stemkowski and the third period is underway. Both teams had good chances to score, but the goaltending is superb. The Leafs appear to be letting down a bit, and the Canadians hold an edge in play. The man of the hour is Bauer, who's called on to make 14 saves in this period. Pulford down the left wing with Papin and Stamkowski. They keep Vashon busy, but the youngster is unbeatable. Saved by Bauer late in the period preserves the tie. Cornoyer breaks around Hillman who stumbles, but Bauer slides out to Rob Cornoyer. After the game, Cornoyer used to say, I knew he was going to beat me and there wasn't a thing I could do about it. The game moves into sudden death overtime, the first goal deciding the match. The first overtime period features end to end rushes and incredible saves by Bauer and Bashan. Bashan is at his best against the high scoring line of Pulford, Papman, and Stemkowski. Cornway twice and Bellavo once to keep the Leafs in the game. Dion, who missed a goal with one second to play in regulation time, gets the pass to Mahavlis. Ashton smothers the puck. Around the eight minute mark of the second overtime period, Toronto forces a face off to the right of Bashan. Stanley keeps the puck in. Stankowski's pass is off Harper's skate to Papin. Over to Pulford, who scores. And Toronto wins three to two. Leafs lead the series two games to one. The fourth game is played at Maple Leaf Gardens, and the Canadians receive pre-game encouragement from a rabid Montreal fan. He's sure his Canadians will tie the series, and his bell will herald every Montreal score. The Leafs open with a flurry of shots on Vashon. They hope, of course, that the Canadians will have trouble shaking off that overtime loss, and they'll be mentally down for this game. But Vashon is not easily rattled.
He makes a sparkling save off the stick of Mike Walton early in the game. Walton gets another chance, and again, Vashon is in the right place at the right time. Johnny Bauer, here of the overtime battle two nights earlier, pulled a groin muscle during the pregame warm-up and is on the sidelines. Sacha, with an all-time high of 100 shutouts to his credit, takes over in the Leafs' net. But this was not to be his night. Backstrom, number six, whips one high into the net, and it's 1-0 Montreal. Marcel Tronovo gets the penalty, and the Canadians have the mad advantage. Six men to five. Watch closely now as Bobby Russo's drive from the point bounces off Tim Horton, then off the side of the net. Delavo whips the puck behind Sachuk from a difficult angle, and it's 2-0. Hopeford gets some verbal encouragement. He winds up in the net, but the puck stays out. That reaction is general throughout the gardens. In the second period, the Leafs tighten things up when Walton shot from the corner, hits the stick, and bounces crazily past Vashon. It's a two-to-one hockey game, but Montreal scores 17 seconds later. Rashai unassisted. Horton scores for Toronto, but Bellow and Baxter also score for Montreal. And going into the third period, Montreal leads four to two. And in an effort to shake things up, Imlock sends out Eddie Shack. Seconds later, Shack and Ferguson collide with predictable results. Vashon protects a Montreal lead of 6-2 after Jim Roberts scores, making key saves on Stemkowski and Walton. The young goaltender, a second-string player with Houston the Central League until mid-March, continues to amaze the experts with his coolness. The period ends, and the Canadians have defeated the Leafs 6-2. The series is once again tied. Vashon receives a well-deserved salute from his teammates and the Toronto fans. The teams move back to Montreal for the fifth game. Millions of fans throughout Canada and the United States watch the action as three major TV networks, English and French in Canada and CBS in the United States, beam a color telecast across North America. Both teams open up just as they finish game number four in Toronto. The Canadians are in full control, and Vashon appears to be headed for another goaltending victory over Sachak. But under that goaltending mask, Sachak wears a look of determination that spells trouble for any Canadian optimistic enough to think the goals would come as easily as they did two nights earlier. Sachak, maligned and taunted in some quarters after giving up six goals in the fourth game, makes it clear to 14,700 fans in the forum that when he's right, he's the greatest. He comes up with key saves on Belleville and Cornwallier. Yes, the master is back in form. Meanwhile, Vashon is keeping pace with the veteran, and he has to be sharp to stop a hard drive by Keon, who seems to be all over the ice. Henri Richard gets a ride to the boards from Horton, but Richard keeps the puck in the leaf end. Duff digs it out of the far corner. Rochefort is racing in. Rochefort shoots. It's one to nothing, Montreal. The Leafs come right back, and Dave Keon's backhand shot is wide of the target. It's Keon again. Over to Jim Pappen, who scores. It's tied 1-1. Happened from Keon and Mahovlich with LaRose in the penalty box. There's more trouble for Vashon as the period ends, but the rookie keeps the Leafs from any further scoring. In the second period, Sajak makes a brilliant save on Belleville, and Keon stick handles his way out of trouble. Here's Mahovlich with a shot, and oh, Vashon makes a spectacular catch on the rebound. Kelly gets the puck to Hillman at the point. 
Vashar blocks the shot, but Brian Conniger wraps in the rebound, and the Leafs take a 2-1 lead. Now Montreal has the man advantage, but their hopes for a tie are squashed by Marcel Tronovo, who breaks up the power play and scores to make it 3-1 for Toronto. Keon adds another goal, and Toronto gives Sadchuk all the protection he needs the rest of the way. The Leafs win the game 4-1, and are 60 minutes away from the Stanley Cup. The teams are back in Toronto for game number six. Gump Worsley, who hasn't played since he was injured in New York seven weeks ago, replaces Vashon in goal for Montreal. The pressure is on Worsley to turn back the Leafs and force a seventh and deciding game in Montreal. Sachuk is tested early by Jean Bellevue, but Sachuk wants to cap a brilliant playoff performance with one more victory. Worsley is kept busy, too. The big M, Frank Mahavlich, tears down his wrong wing and fires a high one that Worsley turns aside. The ex-New York Ranger goalkeeper is called upon to stop 36 shots during this game. Yvonne Cornwoye moves up, but Stanley and Pulford force him to turn and feed Jacques Laperriere. Sanchez saves. Just one of 40 he'll make before the night is over. Mike Walton, a rookie called up from Rochester in mid-season, hits the goalpost. And there's no scoring in the first period. early in the second period and Stanley gives the puck to Red Kelly Kelly shoots Ron Ellis races in to put the rebound high in the net and it's 1-0 Toronto Kaplan and Pulford almost connect to give the Leafs a 2-0 lead but Worsley moves out to stop Pulford who in turn is bowled over by LaRose now it's Dick Duff's turn to give Sachuk a bad moment Duff gets two chances, and his second shot is off the goalpost. Peter Stankowski brings the puck out for Toronto, with Paffin trailing on the play. Paffin, with nowhere to go, backhands a shot in front. It's off Harper's leg, and in the net. 2-0 Toronto. Paffin leads all scorers in the playoffs, and the Leafs go into the third period, clinging to that 2-0 lead. They're 20 minutes away from the Stanley Cup. Inlock is getting great performances from his veterans. Here's Red Kelly moving in on Worsley. Ferguson calls for a rally and Duff sets sail on the prettiest play of the night. A magnificent solo effort around Horton number seven, past Stanley 26, and Duff's brilliant goal puts the Canadians right back in the game. With time running out, the Canadians have to dig deep. To date, they've outshot the Leafs, but the Leafs have been blessed with red-hot goaltending and dynamic team play that has stymied the Canadians at crucial points in the series. Sachuk gives the fans a performance they'll long remember. Dion sends Mahavlich away, but Worsley isn't giving an inch at this point in the game. J.C. Tremblay moves up. Now there's just over a minute to play. The Canadians strive for a face-off in the lead zone. And seconds later, they get it. Go Blake pulls Worsley, and the Canadians have an extra forward for this all-important face-off. Imlock wants Stanley to battle Jean Beliveau for the puck. Both players are experts at getting the draw, and the tension mounts. Stanley moves into Beliveau, and Red Kelly gets the puck. Kelly sends Pulford away, and there's Armstrong streaking up the right side. A perfect backhand pass to Armstrong. And the Leaf captain hits the empty net. It's all over. The Toronto Maple Leafs have won the Stanley Cup. The Leaf players pour over the boards. They pound Armstrong on the back and they pummel Sacha. Keon played outstanding hockey during the playoffs and was awarded the Conn Smythe Trophy for his efforts. This team, they said, was too old and too slow, has come back to win the biggest prize in hockey history, the coveted Stanley Cup. Clarence Campbell, president of the National Hockey League, congratulates the winners as George Armstrong holds the cup aloft. A glittering symbol of pro hockey supremacy. The new champions are later saluted in the traditional way. A parade to Toronto's City Hall. 
It's the end of an era. A half century of NHL hockey comes to a close with the Toronto Maple Leafs reigning as Stanley Cup champions. A new season will bring...